Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome back to How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. Uh, and I had some paint left over from the last uh, winter video I made, so I thought we wouldn't waste it and we would do another winter painting. With some of the colours changed just slightly so you get a, a bit of a difference. And I've just stretched my paper. I always wet the back first, let it soak a while, and then come around to the front, really soak it, then dry it off around the edges so it can't suck any paint back in. So I'll get straight in with some Naples yellow, and I'm just going to create a bit of a, a yellowy glow again here. This is just straightforward Naples yellow, but this is a Naples yellow light. Get it on around here, really. Most of this will be covered up by some of these fir trees. Then into that Grenacridone Rose and the Naples Yellow, the light colour. And we will just sprinkle in some of this, bringing it over the mountains. Once again, some Severus Blue, S E V R E S. And if you haven't got that colour, you can just use Cerulean, it doesn't matter. It's a very close colour, this is just a very, very powder blue. I hope you can see that cobalt blue and cerus blue or you can mix cobalt blue and cerulean blue drop in just a little color just to make a little bit of violet very powdery blue violet go on here maybe some shadows here where the snow will come in and I've dried off the area where the mountains are with a paper towel but I do want to leave some light areas <clears throat> so if you've got too much on you can always a little out <clears throat> say right this morning time <clears throat> we're just adding colour just taking that white glare off the paper I'm just going to re-wet the back of the east sorry I'm just going to re-wet this back mountain I'm oh, just going to create some recession in this. Some mist or some mist, I think, as well. Severus blue and cobalt blue once again. I just want to create some shadow. As long as it's stronger than the sky. You can see my pencil lines on it. But, um, I wouldn't normally draw them in, but it does help people who are learning just to give them a, a, a guide. See there's blue, cobalt blue and quinacridone rose and on this edge here I just want to bring some violets in just to help remove the pencil line gently softening this all together just take some here out so create a separating line this has to dry <laughs> nice and dry <clears throat> I'm just going to re-wet this, uh, this mountain now back to the cobalt blue and the zebra's blue once again slightly stronger I'm going to mix some colors in really so this just change it a little bit get more water into that I want this to come down and create some mist around these trees so I'm just working up a little bit of water in a lot of people are frightened of adding water but once you get used to it it is actually your friend but it can also be your greatest enemy once again some of the violet see was blue granacon on rose and cobalt blue and you'll notice that I'm actually putting a, a stronger stronger tone just arranging it how I want it bring it down straight I think so like that yeah I'll leave that for a minute I want you to paint it up to the the edge kind of thing just get a flat brush just dump 
push the bristles underneath and remove the excess water and paint. So I'm going to come over to these sets of trees here. I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, raw umber just where the trunks are, as long as I know where they are. They may end up getting covered. Now your greatest desire and your greatest pull now is to paint these trees green. But you've got all the blues, your pinks and your violets and no green. If I was to add green now, it would be the wrong colour. What I'm actually going to add, this is a mixture of the cobalt blue and quinacridone rose with some burnt umber. Going to see. And I want this one to go in fairly strong. So I'm just going to show you that your trees don't have to be green. Now you see how that's coming out with a lovely, it's almost like a, a purpley grey. And as you can see, I'm just passing this tree in. Just build it up slowly. Just before it dries, I'm actually going to drop some of the mountain colour in. You can decide how thick you want your trees. Okay. Now, being there's a few to do, as you can see them, I'll just uh, indicate where I'm going to put them and how high. You also need some to break past the mountain. And the reason why you bring the tops of your trees past through the, the mountain from the land and into the sky is that it ties all the picture together so there are no separate pieces. All right, so we'll just do the same on here with this one and this one, this one, this and this one. You don't have to have these many trees in, I will leave it up to you. Always make sure that your mountain is dry of course. I actually want these two to be a little more faded so I'm going to let these uh, paint mixture down a bit because I want these to go into the background here a little bit more so then all I've done is that it's the same colour as that but it's just a different value and that, that all it means is the strength of the colour it's just, just a different value and this will help to create depth in anything that you're painting one here so that one will go in. I'll continue painting these and also dropping some violet in in places and I'll join you when these trees are finished. Okay hopefully you've got your trees looking something like that and as you can see that the, this value is less than this value but they are both the same colour. All that, that is has been let down with more water to give you the impression that there's more recession and I have brought some of the tree mixture down one side of these tree trunks here as the light is coming in from the left to the right so I want to move to this background set of trees here and I'm just adding some water in the bottom and then with that <coughs> watery mixture of the same colour which is the cobalt blue, quinacon and rose and burnt umber. I'm just going to bring this, test it for strength. And I'm just going to bring it into the water here. That I've uh, gently rubbed into the paper. And we're going to create some misty background evergreens. Using the same colour. I just want to <coughs> indicate these for the trees as well and these just slightly weaker strength than these you can always add a little bit more to that or let a little bit of this down but we'll have a we'll see how we go and always remember it's going to dry a lot lighter okay now you've got your fir trees basically in like that and the paper is still damp so as you can see it's bleeding 
into the paper at the bottom where it's damp and I, that's exactly what I wanted to do really because I'm now going to use this for shadow in the snow and it also helps to attach these trees to the ground this will be so pale it will hardly be noticeable just softening these edges in along here so I'm just pulling this down now into the ground add some water and I'm catching the bottom of the fir tree where the colour is and I'm pulling it and allowing it to bleed to create the shadows softening all the lines in again with a damp brush this is quite close to the same value as that so I am actually going to darken it just with another a drop of the same mixture but I'm just going to drop it in just, just to bring its strength slightly more than this and I'm just going to add it down the centre of the tree and not too far just allow it to drift down on its own leave all this to dry and then we'll move forward in the picture I'm just going to re-dampen this side so I'm just taking some water and I'm just running it into the paper put a little bit over here the uh, cobalt blue burnt umber and granacodone rose the sievers blue and uh, just straightforward colour and I'm just deciding where I want to plonk some pulling it back into the trees this is the cobalt blue and sievers blue just a little bit darker and we can begin to add some areas don't forget to leave some of your paper white in a snow scene just to create the illusion of light darker on the left hand side because it's casting shadows and I do actually want to put some of this violet in this was in the mountains it helps tie everything together just pulling it back through the trees now with some Prussian blue burnt umber and quinacridone rose I just want to put some sharp edges along the, along the river bank using a very fine um, double zero round brush very gently pulling this dark mixture backwards shaping the bank with the direction of your brush strokes darken it under the area with the uh, cobalt blue and sievers blue just to add some more shadow I think it just needs it softening the top with a damp brush the paper is still damp and you've noticed that as the page starts to dry out I'm bringing the clips down with it to hold the paper flat so it can't curl up anywhere and I'm just going to put these rocks in um, just with some dark colour really I'm going to re-wet now the whole of this area while we put the water in on this river it's just your sky colours really um, I want to put some Naples yellow in as it comes across the sky it will be on this side it's a bit mucky that Naples yellow see where it's blue Naples yellow and the quinacridone rose so I'm going here and before we do the top part of the river I'm just allowing them rocks to dry Seavers blue and cobalt blue this is some of the violet cobalt blue Seavers blue and quinacridone rose I want to pull this in and then I want to bring some dark just to add some depth to the water always remember this will dry lighter and I'm just going to dry brush 
over the top of the waterfall and this is one of them things where less is more I'm just going to indicate where the water comes over the, the waterfall I want to soften some of this in just add in just a little bit of water just to help the paint flow just a little bit of Seaver's blue with cobalt blue in it I think yeah cobalt blue and Seaver's blue just a touch and as we're going back towards where the light source is coming from the maple yellow horizontal strokes once again and into that I just want to add some of the uh, quinacridone rose and naples yellow and all the time we're waiting for this side to to dry and i also want to bring in some grasses on this side here some of this violet because they will some of these will have snow on them I'm taking some of this very dark mixture once again and i'm just checking the the spread really I need a few more grasses in this corner okay now the the river's dry um, I've just scratched in a couple of wind streaks with a, a ruler and a craft blade and I'm just going to put the finishing touches on here with some uh, grasses he always seems to get around the, the edge of a river. Maybe some in here around the trees. Some in the river also. The little reflection. Some birds in here. then you get round to the best bit this is where you get to sign it and then once it's dry you can mount it and frame it I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please click the like button and subscribe subscribers are always welcome and should you wish to view any more videos that I've made for YouTube I will put a link in the description box and if you click on that it will take you straight there thank you very much for watching